What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. We are here with the legend himself, Christian, Christian Guzman. Guzman. And we are here at Alpha Land Man Fit, uh, Fitness OG on YouTube. Let's get into it. Let's go. We just finished the tour. Yes. What yes. y'all think? Yes. Yo, listen, bro. I'm inspired. That was like legit. Okay. You know what? Walking into it, it's a gym with some fitness clothes in it. All right, cool. No, it was a whole experience. The compound was amazing. And dude, it's a vision come to life. Bro, this shit crazy. Like he was like, um, oh yeah, guys, uh, let, let's check out my gym. Oh, this is lit. Okay. Let's go to gym two now. Wait, what? You have a second gym? Oh, and then also I got gym three. Oh, and by the way, I got all these basketball courts. And oh, I'm about to put a, a, a sandball, volleyball. And I was like, bro, this is like a compound. Like this and is wait, an alpha land. This is like alpha compound. There's more. Upstairs is a lounge. Yeah. With basketball, <laughs> air hockey. Bro, when does it end? Oh, we, we don't need to insert the clip of the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> he, beat us. he beat us pretty badly. Yeah, he, he like, beat us. Man. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, what you guys don't know is that we're going to murder him after this podcast. Today, <laughs> because this really pissed me off, this whole situation. Nah, man. Um, dude, this is fucking fantastic, man. Yeah. And as someone that watched you from back in like 2012, 2013-ish, yeah. when it was CJ Fitness, you know, seeing you work with uh, Chris Jones, doing collabs with guys like Matt Ogus, et cetera, collabing with all these fitness influencers that I knew back then and you're still here still thriving and killing it um obviously you launched alpha elite you're competing with the big boys in athleisure um you you're launching another clothing brand um odelia, o odelia. um bro we got so much to talk about so thank you first and i just want to appreciate you guys coming man oh like, no man oh, anytime. I'm, so, I'm so happy matt I'm, I'm ha I'm, i ended up being happy max didn't give you guys a tour so i could give it you know, yeah. I, mean, I know. He, I bet he did that on purpose, just so I could like give it to you guys. But I really yeah. appreciate it. No, you guys it had fucking. It's at 11 p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> These guys are drawing every single person in the facility <laughs> to come say what's up. So that's like that shows how strong what you guys are doing is, man. No, I Thank appreciate you, man. that. Man. Awesome. Like, Love. That doesn't happen all the time. No, man. And, you know I mean? and um, this is crazy for me. I know my friends back home are going to watch this podcast and be like, what the hell? Because all of us um, all my grew up watching watch you, bro. They're all excited, bro. Yeah. All my designers are like, holy Dude. shit, fresh and fit. <laughs> you don't understand. He's been raving about you and Max for like months, bro. So yeah. it's legendary. Yeah, no, this is great, man. Supporter. From being able to uh, watch to actually like coming and doing an interview is awesome. Um, So obviously I know who you are, but some people in our audience might not. Can you introduce yourself to the people? Yeah, of course. So uh, my name is Christian Guzman. Uh, I started YouTube at 19. And I ended up after two years of filming, dropped out of college from TCU. I went to TCU to then to Texas State University with the hopes of uh, getting a degree in health and fitness management. Mm -hmm. So I knew from the age. So I'm I'm talking all far. I knew from the age of 15 that I wanted to have a small gym. I wanted to train clients specifically, like groups of uh, like high school kids, middle school, high school, and do um, yeah training class. That was the goal, right? And so from there, doors opened with the YouTube channel that. I didn't think would ever be opportunities started, you know, selling merch with Christian Usman fitness on the, on CG the fitness, yeah. CG fitness. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, to expand to the next level, wanted to build a brand, you know, a name that wasn't just like plastered all over your chest. Right. Yeah. So that was alpha elite. We outsourced, you know, our fabrics and fits and all that. He's not related to Chapo Guzman guys. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that he's related to Chapo Guzman, bro. But, uh, <laughs> from doing five, $6,000 in a launch, when we launched alpha elite, we hit, 58 grand in like three minutes. So I was like, holy shit, what the fuck? Wow. This is something different. I was like, oh my God. And so I called my dad. I'm like, dad, we got to get, we, we got to start packing the orders. We can't wait. Like, yeah. you know, we were going to wait a few days and get them out and take our time. But that was kind of the, uh, the start of, uh, you know, whole ass, just like what even to this day consumes 98% of my day yeah. would be the clothes, the yeah. athlete athletics brand. Right. Um, but from that point it's all self-funded and all that. But it, this past year in 2022, we did $102 million in revenue, Bam. Um, which is there's a nice, steady, steady, steady incline. So it's definitely, uh, 
that's a big that's a big one. Dude, your story is inspiring as well, man. Thank you, bro. Can you take us back to when you first started in this like journey towards this alpha land, alpha elite journey? Of course. So everything started because I wanted to build a gym. Why? Because I I got kicked out of every gym because I was filming, bro. <laughs> <laughs> every single gym here, every LA Fitness, every Lifetime, every twenty four hour. Got I tried, got memberships, got kicked out of all of them, bro. And so I I didn't. I just wanted to make videos, bro. For the audience, because I really need to preface this for them so they understand. Mm. When you were recording back in like the early 2010s, you know, 2012, 2013, et cetera, being an influencer, guys, wasn't a thing. Recording no. in gyms was like a big <laughs> no-no. Like if you brought a fucking Sony camera in there and you were recording, like they'd look at you like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Get out of here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Get so, out of here right now. And, and influencers, there was no path. There was no blueprint, right? Nope. There was n you didn't. There was no strategy. <laughs> there was no, uh, you know, there was no how to make these videos and how to like, you know, get more engagement and shit yeah. or, or how to get sponsored. There was none of that. It was really just like or, organic, right? Yeah. I was just, Greg Plitt was a huge inspiration of mine. If you guys don't know Greg, highly recommend to just like search him. Rest Passed in peace. away in 2015. Yeah. I dedicated my first gym opening to him. Yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. he was such a, had a big impact on my life and just trying to, you know, take the messages he's sort of ingrained and just pass them on, right? Greg Plitt was a huge inspiration in my life as well. You know, uh, Army Ranger, mm -hmm. you know, obviously on TV shows and on shit, TV shows, girls, model, everything, like everything bro. maintained being shredded year round pretty yeah. much was almost always in cover shoot shape. Um, and I was a member on his website, greatplit.com well, we back in the day. Am, bro, yeah. So. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's like, it's crazy how, um, even now, almost 10 years later, uh, he's such such an inspiration to people, man. His legacy lives on, and that's the fucking life goal, right? And you and you have a mural dedicated to him here yep. at your yeah. gym. So His I thought that was really cool. Really, like, yeah. They're like, yeah, it was incredible. incredible. No, that's awesome that you still keep his legacy alive. And I mention him every now and then as well in our podcast. Anytime I talk about fitness or who inspired Dance me, so. in the fucking ring. Yeah, right? man. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely you got it. Um, so uh, going back to, going back to your story, we were talking about. Um, College, right? Yep. And you were, so you said you went to TCU. Did you go for like, and then you went to Texas State? Yeah. And, and Austin? Uh, in San Marcos. Right oh, yeah, next, San, right San Marcos, right yeah. Next Sox, Austin. Yeah. And um, uh, just with a goal of getting that felt health and fitness degree, I didn't know that ended up, you know, leading to a P, like a PE teacher. I thought it'd be like, oh, they're going to teach me how to own a gym and how to fucking, you know, build my business and stuff. That's definitely not really what it all was. Yeah, so. they teach you how to be an employee, not an employer. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, Take us back. So you're going to gyms, training, getting kicked out, right? Because it was unheard of to bring a Sony camera into a gym back then, yep. right? Um, what year is this now at this point? This is 2012, 2013. So you got your channel up at this point and you're filming, yep. right? Like 2012, vlogs. March 2012, it all started. Okay. You go to um, the bathroom in college and the, uh, the fucking community bathrooms at three in the morning yeah. so no one would be there yeah. so I could do my posing updates and shit. Like literally just, and it was, it was like the laughing joke of the dorm. Uh, that, like, honestly, it, and it was embarrassing as shit. You yeah. Know, I'm not like, a, I'm not a big, I don't like crowds. I don't like attention on me. I, I kind of just, you know, sit in the back. Right. So it's, uh, that was definitely like rough, just kind of getting mocked and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, I would do like trips to the supplement store and like, you know, just review everything. But people did refer to me as like the fitness, the, the fitness guy who knew all the shit. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the only thing I was good at, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I didn't make good grades. I wasn't, I wasn't smart. I wasn't quick. My, I wasn't any in any honor roll classes other than like drawing and art. Mm -hmm. So like, I really hadn't. I didn't think I had anything other than fitness. Really, you yeah. Know, that's the only thing that ever caught my attention. But who's laughing now, though? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you, um, so you're going to the gym. You're making your YouTube videos. You release your uh, clothing brand, CG Fitness, at the time. Um, at this point, how much money are you making, and how old are you? Uh, no money, no money, <laughs> <laughs> no money. Uh, and I was what uh, second year college was, what is that like 20, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, even I have a story when I was driving home from that second year of college, uh, my, I asked, I had zero dollars and I got a speeding ticket right mm -hmm. on my way home from college. Yeah. So I had to stop at the gas station, had zero money. I called my mom. I'm like, Hey mom, uh, you know, I didn't want to tell her about the ticket. I was like, yeah. fuck. Like, I, I, and that was like the third one. Bro, was it DPS? DPS gave it, it to you? Bro, it was literally on, on, on I-10, like yeah. on the way back. And it was just uh, in one of these small cities. But it was like the third one, bro. I was like, God damn oh, it man. again. But she couldn't. The, the bank was down or the system was down to transfer. I waited four and a half hours. The gas station sitting there, bro. Like, fuck, I have no goddamn money. Mm. Right. And, I, and that was like the middle of nowhere on I-10. And then when as soon as I got back home to the parents, I literally went to my room and my brother's room, took all the DVDs. I took the stereo, bro. I took anything I could get to go just get enough money to go to the pawn shop wow. right down the street. Yeah. 
and it literally like no one saw me. I just got a few boxes and sold it. And I was able to get like 110 bucks. Wow. Which didn't even pay off the speeding ticket. <laughs> wow. And the parents went out. But what, what car? Were you driving? The, it was the was, uh, Z8 back then? That was a Mustang. No, that was before. Yeah, that was a Mustang. Okay. Mustang, yeah. So you had the Mustang first. Wow. And then, um, so you get the ticket, you pay it off. And at that point, was it you were, and you were making no money at this point. So YouTube wasn't given any AdSense or anything like that. I didn't even know you could sign up at that point. I was just mm -hmm. doing email, responding to emails, right? Like uh, people ask questions, I just respond back. And then... All of a sudden, my dad calls me, and I, he hears that story. I saw my grades were plummeting. Yeah, right. He's like, "What are you doing, Clyde? What are you?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm answering emails." You know. <laughs> but he goes, "Well, fucking charge for it." I'm like, "How?" He goes, "There's an app, the Square app, right?" So I, I downloaded the, the Square app. Yeah. And then would start, you know, to get a program instead of just giving free responses, uh -huh. I'd start promoting. You know, you can do this, this, this. Yeah. Charge fifty, but you know, fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. And I would, you know, get the credit card, and then I started doing eight week programs, twelve week programs, mm. to seventy nine for an eight week. Yep. And you know, the ninety day transformation was a huge one for me, and yeah. then all of a sudden. In my second year of college, I was doing between thirty to forty-five k a month. Wow! Shout out to your dad, bro. Shout, Shout out, out to your dad. Fucking Putting Papa, you on, Papa dude. Guz, man. Papa Guzman, man. Yeah. So he tells you start charging first. So you become like an online coach, right? Become an online coach, and I was like, "Fuck, is this illegal or what, man?" Like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know. But I was just very clear up front. You know, I'm not new. I'm not. I'm not, you know, certified trainer. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm going to give you my advice, and you know, you have twenty four seven access to me. Let's go. Okay. And a lot of people start calling. Right, it, it, with the credit, and then I would just log it. I had a notebook with every single day. I'd write how many clients I got. I would write how many, you know, the total revenue, and that was like my proof. Oh, that sounds so much better when I'm closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I started building a notebook of just proof that I could sustain my life, right, without uh -huh. going to school. Because I fucking hated school, bro. Yeah, hated it. So. Yeah. So you're making, you're 20 years old now at this point, 21 maybe. In the back of class, making money. Your sophomore bro. year. Yeah. Um, and you're making thirty to $45,000 a month. So at this point, you're like, fuck this, probably. Yeah. Who needs school at this yeah. point? I was, yeah. I'm, I'm making, yeah, 100%. Making more than your professor. More teachers. But I just wanted to be sure it would still last. Yeah. Right? So that's why I, I kept it going for, you know, I think I did that for eight, nine months. The second whole second semester, I stayed that summer. Yeah. Just to, like, build enough, like, confidence that, Okay, this isn't going to just go away. Yeah. Right. And that's when I, you know, told my parents, I'm just not going to go back this yeah. fall. You know, yeah. I'm just, and that was a, that was a, that was a hard time for my mom. What yeah. did your dad say to you? Oh, my dad's all, he's supportive. He's like, he's yeah, he's just like, you know, he has his own business. He's like, okay. Do I was going to say, is your dad an entrepreneur too? Entrepreneur ingrained, just like, uh, no one's going to give you any fucking handouts, all that kind of stuff. So like literally to the point that every time I get in the car, I'm like, dad, I fuck no goddamn when I was a kid. Yeah. But my mom, uh, she was definitely, you know, heartbroken with leaving school. And stuff of course. Like Cause your parents are always going to be risk averse. Right. So like what, what, um, what does your dad do? Like the, you said he's a business owner. What kind of business is it? So he does, uh, like small trade shows and shit where he will, he'll go and sell like beauty products mm. essentially and just like pop up, pop down dry, and he would travel, you know, Seattle to Vegas to uh, New York and just like come back. He was traveling every weekend. Okay. Um, to do that. But yeah, he'd come home with like, he basically opens up a booth. Yeah. Hey, here's my product. Like the, the expos the, the trade shows. Yeah. He would go at any beauty one and just uh, sell his stuff. Bam. Yeah. And, and, and I know your, your mom does catering, right? Yeah. But she used to be his partner. And so she eventually like, as I got older, started doing catering mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And that's all Alfie eats like deal. Definitely want to talk about that as well. Right. So, so you're making 34 to 5K now at this point. So you leave. Um, did you have money saved as well from this? Because you were like, okay, I'm not so sure if I can do this on oh, my own. It was all saved. I was saving all of it. Okay. Yeah. How much did you have saved before when you left school? I think like 100, probably like 180 to 200K. Not bad for 21 now at this point, yeah, right? Yeah, 20, 20. what did you buy with your money at that age? I wanted a gym, bro. That's all I wanted. Uh, I just wanted to buy a gym. Just, okay. Yeah. Wow. And, and I wanted to get a spot to film. Okay. Right. So, so you, like, you didn't buy a car or nothing? You didn't buy anything? I bought a 370Z. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there bro. we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're a That's car guy, bro. talking about. 27K. Yeah. I remember. 27K for 2009. So, so you bought, so you, so you buy the car and now you, you still got like 150K left or whatever. Um, or maybe you financed the car. I'm not oh, yeah, sure. It was yeah, cash. Okay. You bought a cash. So Always you, cash. Okay. So you bought it <laughs> like a true Mexican. Fantastic. And then, <laughs> you know, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Just think of bro. <laughs> Get on Fantastic. the way. Cash Get on deal, the way. <laughs> orale, orale. Okay. So, uh, so you buy that thing. Hey man, the text is coming back out now. I still buy cash. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you get the, you get the, you get the car. You got about 150 K left. So what did and you I do? With back, and I moved back home. You moved back home. Yeah. Smart. My mom was like, mm. I go, 
It's gonna be upstairs. They're cool. Like <laughs> you know, so you keep you, running the fitness business, right? With no expense. With no expenses. Fantastic. Yeah. And then and then what'd you do from there? Did you like really start like kickstarting CG fitness more or what what came next? So at this point, uh this is when I started, you know, doing merch on top of the clothing. And all the meanwhile, I'm just, I'm not just like doing I'm pumping out videos. Right? Yeah. Pumping out videos of just like the day, the shred, you know, summer shredding, I'm dieting, sharing the tips, sharing the meals, sharing yep. the grocery hauls. Uh and yeah, essentially I had about 150k. I wanted to open up a gym, and so I spent that whole fall, like fall semester, which would have been my third year of college. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of that, just like literally, like saving, saving, saving to get to that like dollar amount, right? Okay. And uh, so now you're selling merch as well as the coaching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And those are like the five, six, seven k drops, you know, of the merch. We'd yep. sell it out uh, right here, locally made, locally printed. Yep. His name's Paul. Great guy. He still does our stuff now for yep. Alphaland. But um, loyalty. Well, yeah, he, and mm -hmm. very, funny story, when I launched Outfleet, the first batch of clothes, which is 2015, so fast, a little bit, I just opened my gym, it failed miserably, because uh, I thought I could be the only employee, like, it was 900 square feet, mm -hmm. uh, I put a little lockbox on the outside, let all my friends come, and, yeah. and of course, you know, start taking advantage, and of course. bringing 10, 20 people in, uh, taking shirts, and you're pre-age, you're like, hey, your fucking pay, your card didn't go through, but you don't want to, yeah. you know, be a dick, Yeah, like, that's nah, yeah. fine, just go, yeah. but, uh, so that business just failed, but. Paul was uh, the first batch of t-shirts that I got were like two and a half sizes too small mm -hmm. from China. Right. And so I opened them up. They're fucking, I'm wearing a triple X and it's like a large. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so he told me, uh, he goes, do you want to be a millionaire one day? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, don't sell those shirts, scrap them, redo it. Damn. But, yeah. And I did. And how much did it cost you to get those shirts? That was like 20K, bro. Down the drain. Damn. And that was, I mean, that's, I had already bought the gym. Yeah. So that was, that was a lot of money, bro. Yeah. And that first gym was like a garage gym. It was really small. I remember. Square feet. Yeah. So that 20K down the drain, then I had to do another order. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I wanted to go a little bigger than 20. Why not? Yeah. So I was about 50 in. And then that's when we launched a few minutes, 58K. And that's when it all kind of started going. Mm. Yeah. Shit. Instead wow. of like the 5K that we were making with the merch. Okay. And this is CG Fitness to be clear, right? This is an Alphalete. The, the yet. 5K is the merch. Alphalete was that 58K. Oh, okay. So, so you, so with the, it was the CG Fitness stuff first. Yeah. Came in crappy and you're like, no, fuck it. And then you launched Alphalete. So it was a CG Fitness brand for like, you know, probably like a total of 10 launches, kind of like yeah. every few months. Yeah. And then as soon as Alphalete, that was like a working project for like yeah. a while. I remember you were waiting to announce it for a long time. Yeah. I remember watching the videos yeah. leading up to it. Yep. Yeah. And so that we were supposed to launch in December, 2014. So this is like over a two year period, right? We're working on Alphalete, we're doing the merch, we're, mm -hmm. we have the gym. Uh, and then it just, yeah, it, it got pushed all the way to March or February, 2015, which wasn't that long looking back. Now my orders take like a year and a half mm -hmm. to make. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we launched Alphalete 2015, February. What made you say, you know what? No more CG, CG, CG Fitness. Gymshark. For example, well, Gymshark. Yeah, because they were the first brand, fitness brand that you could see and Max Tuning. Gymshark plus Max Tuning. Okay. Because he outsources shirts, right? So he mm -hmm. didn't make his shirts in the US. He went to Alibaba.com, mm -hmm. you know, found a manufacturer, and his shirts were like, the, he had a mint green one yeah. with the EF on it. And that shit was like stretchy. It was like he could adjust the sleeve fit. He could make it more tapered, whatever mm -hmm. he wanted. I was like, really? I wish mine were fucking tighter on the arms and, you know, a little bit shorter yeah. and uh, like longer length. And so I, and then I asked him to, you know, who's your manufacturer? Can I, can I, can I, like, you know, have the same hookup? He goes, no. <laughs> but that was the best damn thing he could have done because that made me go and learn myself, right? Mm. And so, uh, so yeah. <laughs> he's, he, you know? he's, he's like, nah, I don't feel comfortable. Damn. And I'm, I'm like, okay. You know, like, fuck, <laughs> okay, I didn't think it was a fucking big deal, but fine. You know, but, but now looking back, it's like, and, and he just found this out a few years, like two years ago, mm. that uh, like I was pretty fucking salty about it. Yeah. But uh, it, it's a big, it was a big lesson, but. And Gymshark was the brand that was blowing the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I remember like they were like the leading athleisure yeah. company back then. Right. And this is what year is this now? This is this like 2013, like 14, 14 to, yeah, 2013, 14. When I'm working on athlete that was inspired by the Gymsharks. Yeah. Cause I was, a, I became a Gymshark athlete in 13, 14. Yeah. I started traveling a bunch, doing all the expos. I was like, holy shit. People know me in the UK. Yeah. Look. Right. And that's when I, I kind of, yeah, just, and I was open with them as well. Like, you know, I want to start, I want to do this. Right? Yeah. So the name Alpha Lee, mm -hmm. how did that come about? Me and my roommate Garrett, literally in the in a dorm room at Texas State in San Marcos, Texas, I had probably like 200 names where I was trying to think. I thought Alpha Lee was so fucking cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> like Alpha Lee, bro. Like it sounds, you know, like a, I don't know what, what I thought it did, but then really breaking it down, it was Alpha, 
leader of the pack and I had Nala, my, my Husky. Mm -hmm. So that was like the yep. wolf, right? right? And then athlete, alpha, alpha athlete, alpha lead. So yeah. it kind of, and it kind of just started sticking, you know? Yeah. And uh, started working. Now it's a worldwide logos. name, dude. Now yeah. it's a world. Yeah. It's crazy. When I was in Dubai, I saw people wearing it. So dude, really? Yeah. We're yeah, thinking about just came back in there. Yeah, Dubai's great. Yeah, it's a great place. Man. I love Dubai. It's safe, <laughs> safe, safe, safe. None it's, of that. It's changed fuckery. a lot in the last few years too. Yeah. Shit. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, so, because I remember the the Gym Shark days too, and I remember like Gym Shark blew up. Like they did this one ad. They had Jeff Side in it, Matt Ogus, Lovato. Um, you weren't in it surprisingly. Alan, I wasn't in that one. That, yeah, that you was know like what I'm talking about, right? Team, bro. I was yeah. Like, Damn. There's the Alan, guys. Gabby, all these guys yeah. like lifting weights and all this other stuff. And and I remember like that was like holy shit, what I want to get shredded. And I would say like that like the, was like kind of like the peak of like the aesthetic era. Bro, um, I would order the stringers that they would wear, but yeah. I wasn't confident enough to wear a stringer yet. Yeah. So I put a wife beater under my stringer, and I, <laughs> and I, and I have a wife beater on and then yeah. a stringer on top, and I'm double layering a yeah. damn stringer. And I have a bunch of videos, where, but I would take pictures and, and tag them. Mm -hmm. And eventually they kind of, they were, Hey, Oh, let me send you a package. Yeah. And then, it, and then it just came down to me like out, out providing essentially than all the other athletes. Like yeah. They needed photos. I would fucking get a camera and I just like book a photographer my own dollar and just like get him content. Mm. Eventually they started bringing me on trips and I started fucking like doing everything I could to help. Yeah. Right. Cause they were a small team and growing. And yep. so that kind of put me then therefore my face was getting everywhere it was yeah like on fucking big banner i was like holy shit I so take photos wow. so you're going all over the place you're you're working with gymshark etc and they and they inspired you to start alphalete so fast forward back to 2015 so you launch mm -hmm. right how'd that first launch go i know that was probably like nerve-wracking i think in that on that day we i think it was like 1 p.m we launched at 10, at 10 a.m and it was like three hours later i was at 127k Right. And I, it was, it was nerve wracking, but I didn't think that much of it because mm -hmm. it was just like a CG fitness launch, but yeah. more inventory. Right. Yeah. But yeah, little did I know. I mean, 127 K I had never, ever, ever in seen in one that day in three hours. Yeah. Damn. Three hours. Wow. And I was like, I was in LA bro. And I was like, yeah, I got to fucking go home. Like yeah. what the fuck? I, I, you know, I had no, that was the most shocking like moment of my life pretty much. Yeah. How big was your team back then? It was me, my dad, my mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they'd come help me pack, bro, and that was it. Wow. My, my girlfriend at the time. Whoever, Call my hombre. Like, my brother, yeah, yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's literally it. That me was, amigos. Anyone at the gym that was like, you know, a member or something like that would, hey, wait, you busy today, bro? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, just come and help pack. And that was, we had no system. I just go run a U-Haul and try to space the clothes out, like the red shirts and the blue ones and just fucking go for it. Yeah. Damn, man. And, um, and and people don't understand like how tough. And I always, I always like shout people out that like, you know, sell their own merch and hold their own inventory, mm. et cetera, because it is such a oh. monumental tax oh, a ta task yeah. to have all that merch in house. You got to keep it in a million different sizes, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. And the merch game is extremely difficult. We have 22,000 SKUs on our website. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in our warehouse right now. That means different pieces of merchandise, yes. guys. Yeah. That's what a skew. Different styles. Yeah. But our, our right now, our warehouse, just our U.S. one, takes up about 220,000 square feet. Holy and God. just until last October, we were doing it ourselves here down the road. So I had a warehouse here that I was paying 130 k a month for. Um, it was 180,000 square feet. Ooh. And and with that, though, I'm not I'm not a 110 k a month? 130. 130. This was 110. That was 130. 130,000, guys. The, just the, the store, or, the merch. And then this building, I started building Alphaland. That's, we're fast forwarding, but that was 110 mm -hmm. base, base. And then I don't operate a distribution. I don't know how to fucking run a, a filament center. Mm -hmm. We're spilling, we're spilling everywhere. We're spilling, spilling money, bro. Like, yeah. I always refer to like a, if we're a boat trying to plug the biggest holes first, because yeah. we're just like spilling out, yeah. just like wasting money. I think we, we, Wasted about seven seven million dollars in twenty twenty. <laughs> just with, just with like, bro, I was having to. I mean, yeah, it, it was. We had one hundred and ten employees, but we were paying like you know just high, high, high because you got Amazon down the street. Yeah, you know, it's hard to get people, bro. They yeah. would quit. You have like people mm. smoking weed, trying to pack orders, and all like, HR nightmare and shit. Yeah. So that was always that was always the biggest stress was the fulfillment. You're right. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, people, yeah. people underestimate how much work that is, man. Yeah, bro. It, it, like running a brick and mortar business, man, is so hard. Like, like you know, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, do. That's why so many people do online and like just sell a digital service. Yeah, because like that's running like a start, traditional though. like brick and mortar business is so difficult, man. Yeah. What mm -hmm. is one thing you would say you learned from that experience that if someone wanted to get into like selling merch, that they should like know f beforehand? Definitely, like one, don't ever 
never give a percent of your company away. That's number one. Mm. Number two, like in all, when you're starting out, it's so easy for people to be like, I'll ship your shit. You market the shit. I'll take 30%. I'll keep 70, right? Whatever that is. But I think, uh, you good? You good? I was checking times. Oh yeah, we good. Awesome. Good to go. It's like two in the morning right now, guys. Yeah, we are <laughs> not check. playing, man. Yeah, we ain't messing. He around. just came off the plane, no rest, <laughs> ready to give us a good podcast. Yeah. Guys. commitment. Yeah, I'll fly so. at five a.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never ends, guys. Yeah. Be late. <laughs> <laughs> we good. We good. But uh, no, I forgot where I was going with that. But so basically, never give up a percentage of your company oh, when yeah. you start selling merch. Huge. That's a huge with anything really. Don't ever like go in thinking, okay, I don't know how to do this, so let me let me find someone else that knows how and give a percent away. Mm. I think that way too many people do that without really thinking. Long term, long term at all, yeah, like at, at all. That's a big one. And then number two would be, if you if you are going to start something where you have a physical product you have to distribute, there's look up fulfillment centers in your in your city. Ideally, if you can keep it in your city, so you can have access to go grab and see the physical stuff. Bam, like that's huge. That's huge, right? And it costs you what three, four, or five dollars an item to ship, maybe a little more. Worth it, right? That's okay. completely worth it. Instead of like taking all that in house, employ. You want your employees to be helping you forward think and not just get the like you know existing things out that's yeah. just old news yeah right you t you want like people to be able to look at the future with you gotcha okay you know, yeah. fire yeah. so 2015 you launch uh your first thing make one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars in three hours yeah that year we did 3.5 mil Bam. Bam. that's awesome Oof. so Bro, now, I, th I thought it was rich, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, I bought a Lambo, I bought yeah. everything. I went ham. I don't blame you. Then I got my tax bill. Yeah, then you're like, ah, <laughs> damn it. Mm -hmm. um, so so that year you made you made all that money. How much did you have to pay in taxes? <laughs> so, my, bro, my mom was my accountant, right? Uh, so in, so it went from, I think I paid like 27K one year. Then the next year was like 51. Ooh. And then $758,000 bill. I go, mom, <laughs> there's a fucking way. What do you mean? Uh, Wow. I would, bro, I lost my shit, lost my shit, like completely lost my balls. Right, I, like, I gotta sell everything. I don't. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Think about it. And that's just, so that was the year that you made three, three million, three, three wow. point five with Alfleet. Think about the coaching. Think about any of the the ghosts or whatever yeah. supplements. Uh, yeah. So how much did you make that year total? Probably like four point, four point something. Four point in something. Revenue. Revenue. In, yeah. in, in revenue. revenue. And then how much did you pay yourself back? Like that's how well, all the. Bro, I didn't have anything structured. Oh, okay, so yeah, you're just no. like, so take it all the money. Okay, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just one big pot. Yeah, you know, it just one all came pile in. Of money, and then, and then, uh, then damn. I, then I learned. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had to pay seven hundred fifty-eight. You made about four point two. You had to pay seven hundred fifty-eight out of tax. Like, did you not write enough stuff off or whatever? Because I would imagine you could have a bunch of expenses. He didn't know. I could. I didn't know, bro. <sighs> I was buying a, yeah. I bought a Lambo ca cash. Yeah, <laughs> you bought it cash. Yeah, you know, bro, you lose you lose you lose less. I'm Mexican, bro. What I like, <laughs> nigga, you wallet. Yeah, I bought a lot of things cash that I shouldn't have bought cash. <laughs> well, you live and you learn. Yo tengo dinero. You live and hey. you learn. Yeah, I got it right now. Take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? One hundred percent. No bueno. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So okay, so uh, <laughs> so you get that big tax bill in probably 2016, right? Yep. So that wakes you up. How did you change and uh, you know reacclimate the business for the following year? To be honest, it took a. It, it's still an ongoing process. Process for sure to to make it into the this machine that's just like you know we have a holding company and that, that they, the holding company to the to the uh, to the uh, LLC. LLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking about our IP company. Like yeah, we have IP stuff with all of our properties. So we got the I have Odelia Properties, which has out you know this building, which now we have the clothing, and we have you know I pay myself the salary, whatever, and I pay like two. I think I pay myself two fifty a year. You still do? Yeah. Because yeah. I remember watching one of your I videos. Bumped, I need to bump it up. Yeah, bro. like because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember I watching one of your videos, man. Like uh, like how much I really make, and I'll, and I saw like how much it's all the, the same, business it's the generate. Same value is that year I made that video. Yeah. Okay. Fuck. So yeah. so dude, and I'm like, wait, still you pay yourself that? Yeah. Like, what, that, that was like five years ago, man. Bro, I don't really buy shit for myself, man. Like any clothing, any nice piece of clothing, any nice other than like the car would be literally for R&D. Like if, even like this fucking polo, I bought two, sent one in, mm -hmm. right? To, to get the mesh. Like like everything is a is an investment. I don't. But see. The food I, I spend. Uber, I go fucking You've hard, passed bro. the point of needing things that are outside of yourself. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. a business now. And for you, it's like, okay, cool. I hit some goals. But once again, the cars, the lifestyle. 
been there, done that. Yeah. So you can move forward, which is important. Yeah. Get out of the way. So, so, um, so you still pay yourself, and that's that's awesome that you still pay yourself the same salary, which is you know two hundred fifty k a year. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, for most people, like that's that's more than enough. And I, I'm the same way. I'm like a minimalist. I can live on even less than that. But two hundred fifty k, that's about let's say twenty k a month, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Twenty twenty one k a month. Um, so, yeah. so you pay yourself that and that, so, and that, where does that come from typically? Does that come from like your YouTube rev or does it come from like, do you take a small portion from your athlete so sales I, or where like, do you take it from? All the YouTube rev, all of the, uh, like my sponsorships, any, ad, like, any promos I do that all goes to a Guzman promotion company. Okay. So in that one doesn't pay, like, I, I think I pay myself like, I don't know if I add all the ones that come in like streams, I think I pay like 50 K to myself from that one. Yeah. Which, thinking about it, that needs to go up too. like, there's, uh -huh. it's constantly a work, but I'll say like ever since that year of 2016, where I got that huge bill mm -hmm. it's like it's been You've just been like bro, it's been a constant just trying to get caught up yeah right like like max for example he's always he's like oh you gotta pay my quarterly you gotta be like always right yeah, yeah. i'm like god damn bro like shit i'm still getting there right yeah because it's uh i'm a big i'm a on the scale of like a, a very like safe conservative like i'm gonna be very meticulous and like be on like i'm like a jumper i like to fucking leap yeah mm -hmm. right leap and figure it out yeah right and so you know i'll keep on moving 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 and uh you know it seems to find its way to work out. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's I, the good I, thing. You, you don't know how much I paid this year, brother. <laughs> oh, you want to disclose? It's up to you. The, 10, 10 mil? 10 mil in taxes? Bro. You need, bro. You need, you need my property, bro. Yeah, but you need something. real estate. God damn. Something, bro. 10 damn. mil in taxes? Holy, Uncle Sam is getting rich off of Goose <laughs> Yo, he said, open up. Uncle Sam said, open up. <laughs> Come with a bitch for it. He did. <laughs> Holy. What the they? hell, bro? They must have yeah. confused oh, my, you with chopsticks. My chop jaw's starting shit. to like fucking shake. I'm like, Yo, yeah, I did. 10 M in taxes? Paid I mean, 7.5 last year. Wow. That's somebody's house. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like 15 houses. Yo, Yo. man, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. you did make 100 M with Alphalete, right? 102 M. So I guess yeah. Uncle Sam's going to take a portion, but God damn. It, no matter what, it hurts. Bro. Yeah. 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 It doesn't matter how much you make. One time, I'm still getting, now I'm going to, I'm getting on the quarterly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you like, had to give it to them at one time? Yeah. Oh, my that God. Was really, yeah. Imagine going to the bank and sending that wire. You should like writing a check for 10 million. I just fucking send it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he should have bought a jet. Something, <laughs> something, bro. <laughs> Not pay that bill. Damn. Like, uh, yeah. like, Greg, 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 I'm trying to build that team so I can like move towards that, right? And, and right. It's, it just takes a bit, man. It takes a bit. Yeah, he could put the plane on the compound. <laughs> yeah, land it right yeah. here at this point. Yeah, bro. helicopter, or helicopter something. God damn, yeah, move. man. Like, um, I, I am curious though. Mm -hmm. Dealing with all the taxes and knowing what, what you've been it. through, what's your, your next car? I'm curious. So next, so I'm actually looking at. I've had the R8 for longer, like four times longer. I've had any other car, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that shows, if anything, I've kind of lo I've lost the interest a bit. But with that said, I still fucking love taking the window, putting the windows down, no music, and just driving, right? Yeah. But I only drive seven minutes a day, so <laughs> <laughs> I drive from my house to here. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. Like, wow. But uh, I'm looking at getting potentially a four or five eight, a, 2015, because that's the year Alfleet Fleet started, right? Okay. Uh, four or five eight speciality. Wow. Because they, they're fucking going up like crazy in value, especially with, I, I think in 10 years, we're all going to be driving. We're all going to be prompted to drive electric, electric cars. Yeah. yeah. So I'm about to get something that's going to be, you know, the last of the last body, the last, that's a unique one. Classic. Low miles and just drive it if I want to every, you know, I only drive that once every one, two months. Mm. So I don't put miles on it. So, dude, seven minutes is nothing, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. It, miles must be low. Bro, we get here, in especially like five, here yeah. in Texas, because <laughs> everything in Texas is so far apart. Like the square, yeah. like the, the it, Houston so greater area right, is huge. Right where I picked y'all up. Yeah, there to Alpha, and that's it. That's and all it, I drive. And it rains. <clears throat> yeah, and it rains. Yeah, yeah bad. Yeah, Hell bad. nah. So going back with, with the with the Alpha leaves, like so you're you're making all this money, scaling up. Um, wildly successful now. You know, uh, you're you're competing with the big boys like Jim Shark. Because I would say when it comes to like the athleisure, mm -hmm. right? Alphalete, Jim Shark, Lululemon, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, There's not, under, under Armour somewhere like in revenue. When you're talking revenue, they're somewhere in that like yeah, in that range. Yeah. Under Armour. Uh, but it's fucking crazy. Yeah, which you're competing Nike. Like you're competing with well, all yeah, these Nike, huge, like, <laughs> huge yeah. brands, right? For in, in an athleisure category. So. You've been um, really focusing on the female clothing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep. So Alphalete started 100% male, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I remember our first women's launch was probably like 2016, 2017, about a year and a half in yeah. to the company. Yeah. I literally sold three sports bras, three units, three sports bras. 
And I, I made, I said, I, said, I told my guy, I was like, I'm going to go hand deliver these my fucking self. What's their address? Yeah. Like, it was just three, man. And, yeah. and it was so demotivating. Like, so I put yeah. a lot of time into it and stuff. And um, then eventually we came, came out with a legging called the Revival Legging, yeah. which was a seamless legging. It made the girls, you know, feel pretty confident. And it got good reviews on YouTube. Translation made their asses look nice. Made yeah, their asses look pretty good. much the ass maker, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what they call me now, <laughs> not back then. Christian but ass maker Guzman, the ass maker, <laughs> yep. the goose. Yeah, the there you goose. go. That's, that's a nickname, not from them. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, so I made the revival legging and got it in a few YouTubers' hands. Yeah, they did some reviews, were real as shit. What they like, what they didn't like, but it was 78, 80 percent. They loved it. So then that really kicked on. Shout out Gabby. Um, she was like the one, Her, I think she, her video got like 2 million views or something like that with the review. Gabby who? Uh, Shay. Okay. And okay. from Canada. And bro, from there, everything started like kind of gaining some traction. It became the legging that was, that was the next like legging everyone wanted. Yeah. So from there, the rev, like we, we went from what, three and a half first year to like 10 second year. Wow. Then to 20, then to 40, then to 50, then to 80, then to 102. Wow. It's a steady growth. It so, so yeah. most of your sales at this point now are female, right? To go from that ten to twenty to forty, that's women. All right? women. That, though, that, not all, but like that's a lot. That's women catching on. Bro. Do you did you imagine that it would turn Fuck into like no, what bro. women brand? Well, it, it's still like the, you should, the the men's fashion designers that we've brought in that I'm working every single day. Like the men's is gonna fucking come back strong, bro. Okay, it's good. never it hasn't gone. It's like quality, simplistic stuff. It's been. But it's time to spot, put a little fresh flair in there. Yeah. Like, but but keep the quality because yeah. like I think the biggest mistake a lot of brands make, which I I feel like we've established, the quality the brand like you if you don't know who you are your brand identity right it's easy to just like make whatever's trending right but if you only do that I think it's easy to not settle it like I want you to see an athlete photo on Instagram and uh, that's athlete right yeah just like immediately from mm -hmm. like the like the people the way you see the, the the just the vibe of it so like I think that we've really established that for men and women so now it's time to just like sprinkle up the spice and the freshness and, and I and I do have some athlete pieces and you the attention to detail and quality is fantastic right I still have sweatpants to this day that I've had for years yeah. um so definitely like good quality stuff and with the oh we, so, didn't, we didn't get our merch oh that's fine we, I got bag. he's, I, he's yeah, gonna hook yeah. us up with a bag <laughs> there you go um shout out to christian for that right. um so and, and and that's smart that you like um right like you're, you sell to men but obviously you have like a, a very strong robust female base yeah, as like well 70 30 right yeah now. And, and you know honestly the fact that you even are able to settle men and do so well to men is a testament in itself because men are harder to sell to man let's yeah. just be honest here like 80 percent of the consumer base is women. Women are far more likely to shop and buy yeah. things, especially clothing, than men are. Yeah. Like guys will sit there. Mil in, in men's last year. Yeah, which is a huge accomplishment, Fucking man. Yeah. Um, so, so um, what would you say when when you're selling to men? What are you focusing on versus when you're selling to women? What are you focusing on? It's a that's a hard question. Yeah, women. If you make them feel confident. And if you make them look, if you look, and for, I'm going to say the same for men too, because yeah. if you look in the mirror, you're like, damn, fuck, yeah. I look good. You know, yeah. like, yeah, like, all right. You get a little bit of that confidence, the confidence in there. Yeah. That's all like athletes about. Yeah. That, that little bit of the tiny, you know, if, the, if this, you're, if whatever, we make the sleeves look good on your, you're like, fuck, you got a pump and you look yeah. a little better than, you know, in, in a different team room, the scoop next with the raw cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I had a couple of those. It's like, fuck, I look pretty yeah. damn good. Yeah. Right. Got some compliments on the silhouette, on, you know, I look like, you know, my chest looks bigger with this T. Mm -hmm. what, like whatever those things are, like just subtly like making you feel that feeling mm -hmm. for girls too, right? It's it's a, the little lift or it gives that illusion that you're, oh shit, I got an ass, right? Yeah. Like that is what we're after. Like making that, edge. making that edge to just give them that boost themselves, a the self-confidence boost. Mm -hmm. Speaking of girls, right? As mm -hmm. we all know, yeah, yeah, yeah. dating nowadays is crazy. Back when you were on your way up, how was dating for you? Was it tough? Was it so there was no dating apps? I've never been. I've never. I've, I never had got a dating app. He was kind of like I'm kind of always long term relationship guy. There's obviously windows of time where I was like single, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was uh, dating has been. It's it's evolved a lot. I'll say that since when I was first you know girlfriend in high school, like definitely evolved is the best word. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, we can, I'd love to go into this. If, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you've been in a long-term relationship now for Almost seven years. Seven years, yeah. Holy yeah. man, Heidi! So shout out Heidi. Yeah, yeah. faithful man, man. The Buff Bunny. <laughs> you know? Yeah, she was the Bugatti. I always referred to her as the Bugatti. Okay. Right before I started, like I knew this, this girl. She had her brand. She was like, you know, 
had hold, held herself very well. Mm-hmm. That's the Bugatti, right? How'd she's y'all? Al- she was always taken. How'd you meet? Oh, okay. How'd, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, how'd you guys meet? So we met because of the fitness space, right? Essentially, she I, she was in the fitness space. She was the main athlete for like Live Fit for One Up and all this stuff. And I remember like having the booth and being like, damn, she's over there. Look at that. Yo, Joe, Joe, look at her. <laughs> like, like that kind of deal, right? Yeah. So that was always the the girl that was taken, you know, the one you couldn't get. Mm-hmm. So that was a... Oh, she was always like in a long-term relationship. Always, 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 always. Okay. With one dude. So that's a good sign. Fuck. Yeah, I was like, shit. That's a good sign, actually. That is a good sign. Yeah. yeah. Right? And she's only like, and you know, even to this day, she's had like th- three boyfriends, four boyfriends. She's right, born in Alaska, North Pole. She oh, grew shit. up there her oh, whole life. Home- homeschooled. From far away, bro. <laughs> the North Pole, bro. Hey, my, my Mexican ass is in the North Pole like twice a year, man. Wow. Yeah, bro. I'm fucking. Oh, you know what? I remember seeing a vlog where you went to go see your family yeah, in Alaska. Bro. I remember. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like literally the North Pole. <laughs> um, so it, and then she moved her life to San Antonio, and not knowing anybody, just to get out and like you know, she worked a hookah lounge. She worked like if you know she did a few jobs just to like make some money, and then started with the fitness thing, kind of like I did. And I was like, yeah, cool. Right. How'd you guys actually meet? Because you said she had a boyfriend from before. How'd you guys meet? So I was dating uh, somebody in the fitness space at the time. That oh, we know who that is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody. <laughs> but they were uh, they were actually at the same gym. They were like you know friends at the time, and so yeah, they were both at the gym, both blonde. I was like, oh. Yeah, we know what you like, bro. Yo, my nigga said, I want her. Yeah. I'm tired of this one. <laughs> <laughs> did, wait, did, that, that first one that we were talking about, did she break up with you or did you break up with her? Uh-oh. No, no, no. No, we, we I ended it with her just because, you know, the shit got real bad. My but, ninja. Uh, it got real bad, but I'll say, like, I'll never speak of any of that shit. It's like, right. it didn't work out. didn't work out. Wish her the best. I hope she's doing good. You know, you know this guy's so nice, man. So nice. Yeah. I mean, she, bro, we, when you grow with somebody like that, like, like we, we kind of both grew so much at that time it's like you you kind of that's part of your life i think any relationship is, becomes part of your it becomes part of your identity in a way mm-hmm. right because like you share a lot of experience and that develops you into the person you are now so, yeah she was with you on the trajectory up i remember mm-hmm. those old videos yeah so, all the gym shark shit and so all that. i gotta yeah. know man how do you know as a businessman how to choose the girl for you as for example what, what do you look for in a girl to take a long term seriously I don't think you ever need to go looking is a thing. I, I think that going and thinking about it a lot is uh, something that way too many guys make the mistake of doing. I think that my number one piece of advice would be the, the more you can work on yourself and focus on it with, and it's obviously we all fucking love women, right? We, it, 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 it's, a, it's a passion, right? Of course. Like, but, and so it can be hard to like, to not want to, you know, put a lot of time and energy. Like you just want it now, 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 but I promise you like there's almost like the longer you can just focus in on your, on what you're doing, on what you're building, on whatever your grades or your fucking anything uh, or your business. It's like you're just going to end up pulling and attracting a, a better quality, a higher quality, a higher leveled up female. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I really that's the biggest piece of advice, bro. Man, if, if you're I'm searching, a- searching, you're going to find something, you know, we find something. But if you work on yourself for longer and longer, you're going to attract somebody that's in that realm in the higher level of the pool. You know what I'm saying? You, no, no. It's it's literally what we always say all the time. Sure. Like chase excellence, and then women are a byproduct. Exactly. Yep. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well said. Um. So, if you're smart, yeah, you can't be. I mean, if you take anything, you have to be, you have a good head and be able to tell like, huh, this girl's trying to fucking. Nah, I don't have a good feeling about that one. Yeah. 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 But, She's it, for the streets. But, yeah. Exactly. For the streets. <laughs> um. So for okay. The highway. So, so yeah, definitely. So a lot of them are for the highway. Holy shit, Scallywag. High, <laughs> high so, ten. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> for Interstate Highway 10. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Uh, brings back good memories. So, um, so the YouTube channel, right at this point, so Alphalete is doing really well. Um, you're making a bunch of money. Um, the YouTube channel, you're documenting your fitness journey as well. Cause keep in mind guys, he's not just, you know, doing all these launches and making all this money. You're also like competing at shows doing the summer shredding series where you're getting down to dangerously low body fat yeah. levels. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've been doing it for years now at this point. Can you, for the people that might not know, can you explain what summer shredding is and how you go about it every year? Of course. So uh, second, when I was filming my videos, 2014, Texas state university, I uh, essentially like did my first show bodybuilding show mm-hmm. and I wanted to vlog the whole process and I'm going to call it summer shredding. I don't know. It was just alliteration, right? Uh, and from there, that was the series name uh, for the dieting series. And 
got did on my first show. You know, I did a teen men's physique show. It looked like, I mean, didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but yeah. I got lean uh, and had abs, got shredded. I did not take the right approach to you know macros. There was there, at that time there was the IIFYM, the whole like yeah. you know tracking that wasn't really out there yet. No, nope. that was more so like the fifteen, the sixteen, seventeen, yep. Red August and three DMJ Alberto. Yep. But before that, it was like. Okay, this guy's a bodybuilder. He gave me my meal plan. I'm gonna fucking follow it, and you know I'm just gonna go for it. Doing the bro split, the doing, bro meals. Yeah, but no carbs. Yeah, but it's like I was I was also ingesting like the information was starting to come online, and so I was kind of like torn. I was like, hey, coach, uh -oh. like, look, I mean, I, I calculated all the food on the, on your meal plan. These are the <laughs> macros it came out to. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these macros that you gave me with the food I'm want. If I want to put, I actually want to eat. And he was like, "You better not eat it." I was like, "I'm gonna put some ice cream in there if I can." Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I, I kind of, you know, but what that did is it gave me an identity. It gave me a goal to track. Yeah. So when I'm filming, I'm not a big camera grabber, so I'd be able to. I know I have to talk about my weigh-in. I know I have to talk about what I'm eating. I know I have to talk about my just like what I'm feeling in the gym. So it gave me these things when I was filming to like check in on. Yeah. Right. And, and so that kind of, even to this day, I've done a show every single year because of that, it would yeah. just like really build, you know, build the engagement to, um, you know, to just share the fitness journey, go to, go from shit to fit. Yeah. You know? like, as, as Chris, Chris Jones famously say. says, yeah. and, and you know, the, the crazy part too, that people don't understand is like this whole fit, fitting your macros and hitting those targets. Like, like you said, it really wasn't a thing until like 2014, 2015 ish. Like it was still like highly skeptical. Like, what do you mean I can eat? cookies and still lose weight and get shredded yeah. it was like yeah you can because if you make it, it count like your miracle. calories yeah it was, it was like, like what the fuck yeah, yeah. like it, and it went against like all the traditional bodybuilding like tenements mm -hmm. of like oh you don't eat carbs you better eat dry fish and get that's how you get scaly and shit like it's like what the hell so <laughs> yeah. like yeah i remember like all like these old things that bodybuilders used to say and it's like it's like you're getting your reality shattered eight meals a day that's yeah. bullshit by yeah the way. six meals yeah. a day bullshit. every three hours so that the main uh, you know the the uh, metabolism stays up like all oh, bro science bro, greg puts that eat every hour and a half yeah i remember that oh, bro i was at the fucking food hall every 90 minutes yeah. fucking ready to eat bro just like shoving food down because like, i didn't know right and and you know shout out you know not any disrespect but it's like we didn't know at the time but like yeah luckily the science evolved people like like 3d you know Matt Ogus was, he, he was like, they were living proof. Like, yeah. holy shit, he yeah. can do it. And he's looking at him. I remember eight. I remember he did a show, Matt Ogus. It did a show eating Chipotle every single day. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be on that diet. Yeah. You know? Like Eric Helms, Lane yeah. Norton, mm -hmm. uh, Alberto Nunez. Yeah. Like, I remember all Alberto these guys. Was coach for a while. Oh, was he? Oh, wow. So good. Yeah. He's a fucking great What's coach. he doing nowadays? Fucking shredded still, man. Yeah. He's, he just competed. Man, yeah. we got to get him on the fucking. Pod. I would love to. Like, yeah, I want to go see him. He's uh super chill, and uh, he's he just like genuinely like invests a lot of time in. Yeah, you know, if there's any coaches I would recommend, it's the three DMJ team. It's the uh, the Jeff Nippert's also fucking incredible. His programs, like his uh, yeah. one off programs, are like yeah. fucking enough to like you know give it's an, enough information to fucking hold you over and like it's a really high recommended person. Yeah, I love Jeff as well. But. Um, yeah, and he does a lot of science based stuff, and mm -hmm. he goes like really deep into the studies, and you know that's. That stuff that's has always like intrigued do. me. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, that's when I started my channel. I like was really into that stuff, um, and because I'm always keeping up with the literature as well. I'm always keeping up with <clears throat> the latest literature on like nutrition and fitness mm -hmm. and everything else like that. It's just the thing that sucks though is that I want to get your take on this too. Like it repeats. It, it's repetitive, yeah. and the fitness genre nowadays is like it's, it's a dying, dying thing on YouTube, bro. Yeah. Like you, you can't I'm vlog about to revive your that fitness. Bitch. Yeah, like. You know? It's like, fuck, man. Like, people don't give a shit about it anymore. It's like, nowadays, like, you, if you're going to be a fitness influencer, it's like, you got to have, like, a secondary niche, like, lifestyle or, or, or something. Or just take fucking the, the trend, whatever. It's like, it's like that's not that's not a fucking good direction I want to, like, ever promote. Like, that, that, it's like, it seems like the the, the younger crowd, the young generation, yeah. now it's, like, so quick to just, like, I'll fucking do it, bro. It's like, it's like it's, you should not take your body that loose. You shouldn't take that approach that, like, carelessly going on dark side you know what i mean yeah especially like if you just don't have enough training under your belt or Agreed. experience to get lean if you can't get fucking lean for a show and have the discipline to do that you better not fucking think about that shit easy come easy go it's like until you give yourself years and years to know like i can do this i can't i can you know do this and like this is gonna be my career it, and then it becomes a question right and 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 you have to but don't do it just to fucking get big quick because then it's going to go quick, you, and you're not going to have the foundation to do it. Yeah. And, and to actually, like, reap any benefit of it. I agree with right? you 100%. Like, so, train Natty five to ten years. At least five years. You know? At least five years. Bare minimum. Consistently. And Get, be honest with yourself, it was actually fully consistent. Yep. Did I actually, like, do everything I could? Did I actually program myself? And, and did I actually, like, follow this shit for six months before moving on and getting bored? Like, that's, it's such a, 
if you can't get over that mental part, you're it just starting a cycle is going to literally just have the opposite effect for you mentally. Physically, you're just going to go through so much more shit because you're not, you're not decided. You're not like disciplined enough yet to do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. True. Christian. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was I was going to say, um, the people are going to they want to know is Christian goes my natty or not. So one of my goals is to go for my pro card. Right. And I did a 10 year commitment, thousand YouTube videos, blah, 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 blah. One of those is to get my IFBB pro card. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that. Like I said, if I don't promote, I'll never promote anything that I don't, it, that can be taken out of context like that. Yeah. But right. be responsible, do your research, it, earn your stripes personally. And if you can be honest with yourself about that, then it's your fucking life. Yeah. You do what you want. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Be uh, under the care of a doctor too, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You can keep it thousand with us. Just keep it real with yeah, us. Yeah. Of course. When it comes to competing, mm -hmm. everybody's well, everyone's everyone's on shit. Got it. Unless you're in like a natural organization, uh, like a like a uh, yeah, NGA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think yeah, yeah. I think it's called NGA. Yeah. Because yeah. because my trainer was like, bro, everybody's doing it, so mm. it's just what it is. It is what it is. So yeah. Um. <clears throat> So you so you did the summer shredding. To remember, right? That's, yeah, that's fucking important because, like, yeah. I mean, if you don't know that everyone's on shit and you're kind of naively, like, but just don't just don't try to look too hard into it because ultimately it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, it's yeah, just it like, and that's the th it's like, don't try to look like someone else. You'll never, I, you'll never look like great. I'll never look like great plate. Yeah, right. So it's just like try to just build on what you got. Speaking of that, 100%. what are your thoughts on the Liver King controversy? Uh oh, bro, I didn't even know who the guy was, man. He yeah. lives like right down the street, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> oh, he, he lives oh, in wow. Texas. Yeah, I didn't know. yeah, Jesse James. Uh, he stayed at his house for like a weekend. Mm. He, yeah, and I, I won't say. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, he, his abs are definitely fucking fake. Yeah, but I mean, doing his thing, I guess. Right? Would you say people that he eats like that. balls and shit? He's like straight up like. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I liver and all that other stuff. Yeah, no, I don't know about that. Would you say that anyone that believed that from the beginning should be duped? Because, I mean, you could clearly see that... Uh, should be what? Duped, because you could clearly see that he was definitely uh, different. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, he's very... I mean, I don't, nothing to say. Yeah, it's... My thing is... People can watch for entertainment, I guess, right? to any extent they want. But, like, if you're going to be listening to... If you're going to take any sort of advice from... Anything you hear to that extent, like, come on, like just look at a few others, you know, be sure like you follow up with like uh, other opinions before you go and decide to do something yourself. And, um, yeah, just do his thing, you know, he's making money. He's killing it. Yeah. And, and I'm sure he's impacting a lot of good people in a good way. Yeah. So yeah. that's all that really matters. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I th yeah. I think he's changed a lot of lives and like everyone like is like, you know, making eating balls videos. Yeah. in balls changing mm -hmm. lives. Uh, I, I look at it like, listen, whether he's natty or not, or he might have lied or whatever, I think he changed a lot of lives and he helped a lot of people. Yeah. And I think, I think he's done more lie, good than man. bad. Just don't lie. Yeah, it's lying like, fucks you up. Lying fucks you up and not, and then just like admit to it, come out, like even with business, with anything, it's yeah, like, dude. I fucked up. And just say what, say Own what it. happened Own and, it. and give more info than necessary. Yeah. This is what happened, right? Yep. The sooner you can do it, the, the the it's just like that solved, it doesn't solve the problem, it's just out there. And you're, at least you're honest. And that's, yeah. it. that's all you can fucking do in this world. I would say, like, um, the one thing I will say about fitness YouTube that I like more now than before is, like, people are, are more transparent 100%. about gear use and stuff. Like, whereas, like, before, I remember, like, 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. people were super scared yeah. to say anything because, like, they lose sponsorships mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, nowadays, guys are way more honest about it. Yeah. Which yeah. is which is good. They should be careful in the U.S. though, because that's just still illegal. Yeah, still illegal. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? <laughs> like, oh, um, and we talked. With, we had a discussion with Greg Doucette talking about this. Yeah, Greg, it's yeah. like in Canada, Broken it's on. like allowed. So he's just like, yeah, yeah, I do this and I do that and blah blah blah. Yeah, and he, obviously, yeah. he's like transitioned off now because he's like more into I like endurance Greg. training. Greg's a cool. I like Greg a lot. So good yeah, energy. no, great. He pumps out his content, man. He's 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 on it. Yeah. Um. So you've done summer shredding. Your goal this year is to uh, become a pro, right? Yep, uh, to be well, within ten years. Within ten years. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try every fucking year, bro. Until hey, I get man, shit. keep doing it, man. Keep doing it. Um, <clears throat> oh, so can I get a is there water? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So can you can you grab it from over there? Yeah. She'll get you one. Thanks a lot. I can oh, catch no. it. Two. Oh. Yeah, yeah. For the ones from. Thank there. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of exercise. We've been doing a lot of yapping. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about the businesses real quick. Cause you are a serial entrepreneur. You own several businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously we talked about awfully generating now, uh, last year, 102 million. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Really Thanks. crazy. To say the least. Um, Thanks. 70, what, se about 70 M from the, from, uh, from in the women's section yeah. and then 30 uh, M from the men, which is impressive. Cause like I said before, it's very difficult to sell to men. Um, they're more, um, they're not as impressionable as women are. They're harder yeah. to sell to. Um, 
3D Energy, right? Yep. They're doing doing great with that as well. This um, will consistently do about one, a mil a month. Holy. Yeah, a what, else, a month. what else do you have? So the clo- the alpha the clothing the alpha land which consists of alpha eats which is my mom's catering or the let's talk about thing. that yeah 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 so um so obviously you got alpha land and you got like three gems in here right yeah and thank you yeah we got three gems in here and basically you got your mom's catering service mm-hmm. you got an alpha eats store in there. Like, yeah, take us through that, man. So essentially the pro- it's an 18 and a half acre lot on that 18 and a half acres, which makes alpha land. Mm-hmm. We have uh, gym one, gym two, gym three, each with a different environment and feel. Gym one is meant to be the the bougier uh, AC gym, all brand new equipment, that kind of feel. I saw that. You walk into gym two and you have the old alpha lead gym vibes, like open bay doors, um, the weather, whatever the fuck the weather is, you're yep. having they put a hoodie on if it's cold, yep. right? It, uh, louder music, you can take your shirt off there, just don't put shirt on, you don't put your you know skin on the equipment. That's the yeah. only rule. Um, and just a lot more grungy, loud, and open. Mm-hmm. Uh, gym three is like, uh, I don't want to say a CrossFit box, but it's more so like the first gym kind of just, you know, bare bones um, kind of What's needed and required. And it gives that exactly. feeling of your first gym from before. Exactly. And each and every gym is fully equipped. So like you don't have to walk back and forth to get a piece of equipment. Was it like two, three basketball courts? Two, three, two basketball courts, football full field. Full court, by the way. Full court. Two uh, football field. We are adding on the sa- two sand volleyballs, the pickleball, tennis courts, the all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, what else? We have the uh, common works uh, spaces. So we have 24 stations. Just plug in, work, post up, a lounge. Alfie eats is my mom's. I made her a... Uh, she was a, she did like catering. So I, for years at the house, um, at, our, at my, my house I grew up in. So to get her a kitchen was a big goal. So this property had a kitchen, commercial kitchen. So built her alpha eats, mm-hmm. right? So she operates that and, uh, you know, she deals with all the managers, all that kind of stuff there. And people are able to go in there and like get food. Mm-hmm. Like, like good it's food. a restaurant. Not just like healthy food, just yeah. like, like, like home cooked good shit. Yeah. Right? So, uh, that does like, that does like seven, 60 to se- between 55 to 75 K a month. Wow. Um, in nice. sales, which I mean, it's, she's so excited. She's like lit up excited, like, yeah. you know, to, to, to be managing that and just like working on it. Mm-hmm. And then the retail store, uh, we have Alfle athletics. We have Odilia. We have a store there. That's going to be for that one. The fashion brand coming out. Yeah. I'm to see it. I've got the 3d, uh, buff bunny, which has a space there where we, Essentially, with Anaka, Buff Bunny, and, and Max's stuff, we mm-hmm. take a percent of the revenue that they bring. So anything we sell, we essentially give them seventy uh, percent back at the end of the month okay. of the revenue. So it's a thirty percent fee. We sell it for them, we stock it, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's how that kind of works. Even guys, even Alfie, it's a thirty percent fee. Okay. Wait. Guys- so you so you take thirty percent from yourself? Yep. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> hey, just so you know, I'm not being discriminatory. Yeah. Hey, I take 30 percent for myself, guys. 100%. So, so that's how yo, that's and fucking you, awesome. You sell your girls merch, and like, hey, give me 30 <laughs> percent. Yeah, I love you, baby, but yeah, yeah cut. pay up. I built that. Yeah, design yeah. the retail store, bro. Yeah, no, lot, fuck that shit. No, hell yeah, yeah. man. But so, I will say, guys, he's telling you guys about this Alpha Land by words, but you got to see it in person. Yeah, you got to come out amazing, and check it out. It is amazing, guys. It's like a wonderland of like fitness, inspiration, and like motivation, man, honestly. The so, culture's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, I got to ask this question. Ask it. So, yo, because I we, we talked about uh, about this with Max. So what is it like? Because you got you, Max, your girl, um, Coker, Charlie mm-hmm. Coker. Like you guys all make like clothing that's like kind of in the same niche of like athleisure mm-hmm. slash fashionable etc like you guys are all competitors almost yeah pretty much no, for sure yeah so like how do you guys like go about doing that without like wanting to kill each other <laughs> uh advice now it's i don't i don't look i don't ask about what what anyone's up to it's uh-huh. just like everyone just kind of stays in their lane right mm-hmm. and and does whatever they're gonna do naturally it's gonna happen mm-hmm. and i think that's a big one i think like if i were to go look, hey are you did I see that you were doing it? Like, there's none of that shit. Uh-huh. It's just like we all kind of stay in our in our lane. And with that said, it's like charlie has got a direction he's taking the brand, which, yes, some things are going to cross, of course. Mm-hmm. And same with Buff Bunny and Alfie, the things are going to cross. But it's like at the end of the day, everybody's brand keeps going up and up and up and mm-hmm. up. And that's been the same since, like, since we all started. Yeah. So it's like wow. it's just uh, the world is way the, – the market's so much bigger than we fucking think it is. Yeah. Like so much fucking bigger. So and, it's like, and Lulu's doing four billion in just the Align fabric last year. So it's like four billion billion. Wow, for, in wow. one fabric. Wow. Right? So it's like, and then Jim Charge at six hundred, right? So there's such such a big gap here. Yeah. And it's like there's plenty of fucking room to go and take it. Yeah. What about right? that brand Aloe? Is that brand new doing well? I don't know what the, I don't know what the revenue is, but they do well. Yeah, they do well. I know we the, our retail store did more than the retail store they got in the 
in Cali in that main like area. Yeah, they put a store in, in Miami recently. Oh, really? All the girls are going there. I'm like, what's up with Allo? But hey, their leggings aren't the best. But, <laughs> but they, they do have some, they have a lot of products or a lot a lot of design team and just a lot of like they're they're on top of their shit for sure. Hopefully all the way. Hopefully all the way. Um. So, so, because one thing I've noticed, like from being here, and I talked about this with Max as well, that's very interesting, is how you guys, like, you've kind of created like an infrastructure for all your friends to come in and thrive. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you kind of like provide a platform for them to all make money. And I look and I see like, um, you know, you'll be modeling ever forward and then you'll go ahead and model uh, Coker stuff as well. And it's like, it, like you guys all work with each other. And then like Max will go ahead and model your clothes and vice mm -hmm. versa. And you guys all work together. And I'm like, I, it's like really cool how you guys are competitors mm -hmm. yet. You guys Heidi all does work all the samples, bro. Like yeah. She's my one consistent body. I got to try on the extra smalls. Yeah. So it's like, she'll give me like honest feedback to yep. make my product better at the end of the day. Like at, 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 when it's 2 AM and like literally have nobody that can come through to help with like any, like she's always there to help. Yeah. And like willing to wanting to help. Yeah. So it's like, that's huge. Right. It's like, but it'd be easy for her, like not you know want to give all the you know, her, her actual thought. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, you know, she, it's definitely like uh the more, and I will say like, like I don't need, I haven't shot from action a bit yet, but like that was years ago, but it's like, even with the evolution of everything, it's not like we don't want to do that for each other mm -hmm. because we do, we would in a heartbeat. Yeah. Right. It's just, uh, yeah, I think it's just um, interesting to see, like, I see you modeling his clothes and yeah, I see still, him modeling like, hey, your clothes. Down, Drew, come on. I'm like, hey, okay. You yeah. ask him here. Yeah. Right? What do you need? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, tell us a little bit about your, your friendship with Max. Like that's your best friend. Yeah, yeah, um, best friend. like how, how did you guys, uh, meet and how'd you guys become like best friends? We met at the Arnold in 2015 and I, uh, I actually reached out, he had his YouTube channel. And so I reached out over Facebook mm -hmm. and I sent him a picture of three dumbbells, three, <laughs> three different types. Uh -huh. I go, Hey, uh, you know, watch your channels. Which type of dumbbell do you like? And some building a gym, you know, just want to get your opinion, you know? So I, yeah, that was, that was it. And then ever since we, uh, 2015, we met in person, kind of hung out, and then he would start coming to Texas. I go to Virginia, mm -hmm. and then he, I, you know, I bought a house here, so he would come stay for like, book a flight for four days, and end up staying like a week, two weeks, yeah. three weeks, yeah. four Damn. weeks. And yeah, I'm like, come on, bro. Yeah. And so eventually, he moved over, got a warehouse here, and uh, yeah, I mean, the rest that was like probably 2018 or so that he moved yeah. here. How and he met his girlfriend here too. Mm -hmm. There you go. How important is it? Because obviously, you know. We talked earlier in the interview about how like you were filming in the gym, getting kicked out, etc. It's very difficult to find like-minded people, and it's even harder to find like-minded people that do exactly what you do, understand what you do, and respect it, and can help you thrive, help you film, whatever. Because like as a YouTuber, it's like a whole other yeah. thing, and have integrity and are honest. Yeah. How was it? How hard was it to find someone? Is that do you think that's a big reason why you and Max like immediately click? Because you guys were both vloggers. 100%. That we that we had everything in common was our interest. It was yeah. it was YouTube. It was like posting videos. It was thumbnails. It was like, what'd you get? A four out of ten? <clears throat> was it nine out of ten? Was it one out of ten? What'd you get? Yeah. Like like that's even to this day. It's like I'll set I'll fuck around with them. And be like that's definitely not a fucking above a seven. <laughs> you know. It's like so, and though we may not be helping each other physically as much as we're, we're like me and Max are the ones that were definitely like at the tightest out of you know anything, but. You know, he'll tell you the same. It's like we. I wish we we saw each other more. We're in the same building. Hard. I don't see him that much, right? Mm. Which is crazy to say, but it's like you know it. You know, because growing pains, growing pains, man. Yeah. But it's like that that respect, that feel, that kind of you know, I got you was always there. Right? Yeah. But he even said earlier in his interview, you said, for example, just you doing your business and you ex exceeding motivates him to do better as well. Mm -hmm. So as a friend, I mean, that's motivation right there. Fuck yeah, yeah. And, keep pushing, bro. and it's great how, like I said before, you guys literally have like a like a little empire over, actually a big empire here. Mm -hmm. Um, this and how the you guys thing in the yeah. fucking candy industry, in yeah, sour, you know, sour strips, and and the fact that like you guys all motivate each other, push each other, even in the face of being competitors of some mm -hmm. aspects, um, still pushing each other to become better. It's like really, it's really beautiful what you guys have built here, and I've seen it like grow for like ten years, like from watching you first come on YouTube. To now, it's like wild to see, and like now that I'm talking to you, it's like in your facility, uh, it's crazy, surreal. Thank you, surreal stuff, man. Thank you. Um, Are the cameras good? What? Yeah, I think they should. Be. Yeah, 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 they're good. Awesome. <laughs> Watch, um, none of this should be filmed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, going back to, damn it, it was the um, oh, going back to the gym and everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you have Ever Ford here, Buff Bunny, everything. And uh, you got the kitchen for your mom. So what are you generating on a monthly basis from the gym and everything else? So we'll do about a million a month. Wow. Uh, about right between 850 to 1.1 a month, uh -huh. 1.2. It was our biggest month last year in 2020. That was our first year being open. Mm -hmm. We did uh, like 
two, something like that million, which was wait last month. No, last year. Last year. Last year. Okay. Okay. Wish. Okay. I'm about to say, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. That's still so, sick though. It's like in our old gym that before we moved out to, you know, did this facility, we did like a million in the whole year. Oh, so wow. 10 X bro. Wow. So, cause I, I got That's so many crazy. questions on this because I went, you don't know this, but back when I was a federal agent, I came out here actually to do a drug trafficking investigation. <laughs> uh, Hopefully not at the gym. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 not at the gym. <laughs> I was, I was here. I'll never forget. I, I was uh, like, I want to say like 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, around that, it was right after Harvey, so it might have been like 2017, yep. 2018 ish. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, and Houston had recovered at that point. But I remember I came here for for a drug case, we, we, like some dude. Uh, he was involved in a lot of marijuana, like thousands of pounds of marijuana smuggling. That's a whole other thing. But I came out here, and I remember it was a late night. I went to the gym, and I did like a day pass, and it was the old gym that you had mm -hmm. before, which like had turf and everything yeah. else like that. That gym was fantastic because mm -hmm. it had like that it, the open doors and everything else like that, which is similar to Jim Two's yeah. feel. Um, you said so and that one, one with the with the glass on the thing. Yes, yeah. and that was generating. You said a million a year, so about hundred uh, k a month. It finished off, yeah. It, it was like four, probably four years we were there. Like mm -hmm. year three and four, we hit like a million one point one. Okay, so yeah. about hundred k a month. So, because I've always wondered this, like, are gyms like profitable, profitable? and then they hard to run? Hard, very hard to run. Very hard to become profitable, especially if you don't want to go too commercial mm -hmm. and just like start, you know, doing. There's a lot of ways to, you know, just things have things in the contract and, and really shoot for higher membership just like but then you kind of start sacrificing some of the, the 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 good feeling i guess like good business gesture uh loyalty that you have with like members that you've had for years right mm -hmm. right so it's like there's a it's very and then as an owner i'm always buying fucking equipment just as like the i'm always just trying to upgrade yeah so it's definitely like looking at the gym business alone very very difficult like like i would I don't want to ever say don't, you know, this, it is it's fucking possible for sure, but you have to think about what are you bringing and what's going to make it different for us. I think the biggest difference for that gym to this one was really like trying to create a space for any, any person that's interested in like social media or, you know, the TikTok, or whatever, like wanting to be on camera and kind of build a social platform for themselves. You can like record. Just encouraging that. Yeah. Encouraging it, being open and having like empty white walls, black, you know, just like a lot of settings, environments, a lot of photo op spots. Like from when you drive in to the sign outside to the six foot letters, like from that to the entry, to the retail, to the, everything's planned out to become like a photo, of, you know, a spot to take a picture. Like yeah. for, in it's my a head. very influencer friendly gym influencer here. Influencer friendly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, damn it. I need to get closer to the mic. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. 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 Welcome. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. That in um, the retail too. The retail does like 400K a month. Wow. So that, that's huge, right? So the store, okay, so let's break it down. So the store makes about four, that you about have four. in the gym, about $400,000 a month. Three to four fifty, yeah. Um, And then the all three gyms generate how much? So the memberships, we have, we started in 2022, January 1st with like 1,400 memberships. Now yeah. we have like 3,300. Okay. And we're charging between like our legacy members that had memberships at the old one. Yeah. They pay seventy nine ninety nine. Okay. Uh, if you come, so you honored that we honored it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was like a slight increase from what it was. Uh huh. So we honored that, and they're locked in forever. Okay. So if they uh, if if you're a person that comes to sign up now, it would be uh, if you do a two year contract eighty nine. If uh -huh. you do a one year contract ninety nine a month. If uh -huh. you do month to month, it's one oh nine. Okay. Right. So. Now we're at 33 ish hundred okay. memberships. Uh, so that's that'll generate. And that's access to all three gyms, basketball oh, yeah, yeah, court, yeah. everything. Once you're, you're in, you have the whole deal. Yeah. Okay. The whole deal. And we're adding saunas, we're adding all that shit soon. And how much does that generate a month? With all what that? Was that 3,300 times like average of 89? Okay. Let's uh, maybe like 92 average, let's say. So right now. Yeah. 3,300 times 99 or the 92. Okay. 3,300 times. 300K. Time, you said 92? 92. Okay. 300K. Yeah. 303K. Yeah. Pretty, 300, about 307 alpha eats is like 60 average yeah like between 55 to 70 yeah so that's another what 700 yep ish yeah 720 yeah three yep seven yeah a year and then um and so and then Sense. and then there's another what then there's, there's the uh the what else is there the concession stands so okay all the like the protein shakes the this the, the all that that's going to be at least 35 to 40 a month okay so that's another yeah that like brings us to eight, somewhere something. seven to eight hundred eight and then the other 200 do you know where that the comes other from? 200 is going to be the fluctuation oh what is it the fucking training department 
Oh. Training department does like 30 to 40. Okay. Like mm -hmm. the personal trainers on staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we have like another hundred, because you said it makes about a, well, no, that, that, that covers that, that, it, that right? Covers it, yeah. yeah. And then, because because then people pay for day passes too. Exactly. Because oh, oh, this is shit. No, yeah. Like day passes. <laughs> day passes generate day a lot passes. of money because this is almost like a, like a place you got to stop. 68,000 day passes we did in 2022. Holy shit, man. Which it's a, it's $25 for a single day. And then you can obviously do like three day pass. Yeah. You can do a five day pass or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fluctuations like retail three to four, the fluctuate, like whatever the average is. I mean, I'm shooting for 14 this year. Yeah. So it'd be, those are the numbers like now. And I can imagine like, cause I mean, I'll tell you this, I was here to do a fucking case. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I got to make sure I come and work out at the Alpha Legion. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is what 2017, 2018. So I would imagine now we've gotten bigger. You know, people have seen people it on YouTube, here, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So they'll be like, damn, I'm going to come Crazy. to this gym and pay a day pass because it's like kind of like a rite of passage to come work out here. Maybe I might spot Christian or Max. You know what I mean? We Boy. just left the, the compound, the mm -hmm. gym. This guy was like, yo, bro, I moved from Orlando. To come oh work, yeah, work at Austin Dunham's buddy was yeah. here. Yeah, was, that's crazy. He moved the, all the way across from my Florida to come to Texas Community, just to bro. work out. Community. I mean, that's yeah. If fitness is a big part of your day, and like the if you really like, it's like, bro, I wish I had this shit ten years ago. Right. Like I would fucking move too. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and you know what, dude? Honestly, it, that's crazy. If I was I've a never YouTuber, said that. I've never said I would move to. Like I would have moved. Yeah. If this was, if something like this was there, ten yeah. years ago, hundred percent, left I'll, college would have gone there, bro. If I was like a fitness Damn, influencer or whatever, crazy. thinking about it, like, yeah, this is probably a good place to be because there's yeah. a lot of like-minded people, people you collab mm -hmm. with, and it's more, less distracting. Like, like this is a like a nice Network, serene bro. area. Like, Everyone's an entrepreneur here, bro. Yeah, and you never Everybody. know. You never know who you're gonna like, meet. Being in Miami, through. like, bro, like me and Fresh be left out a lot of the times because like yeah. we don't do drugs, we don't party yeah. like that, we don't drink, so it's like. He'll be at the club, but he's there to network and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I'm working. You, you, like a lot of the people, like when I heard you guys didn't drink, I was like, damn, what do they do for fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just podcasting, podcasting fucking bro. kick bitches out that's the what, show. That's what Max travel, yeah, make, dude. make money. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, that's what we're focused on. So like, we're kind of like out of tune a lot of the times with like these Miami locals. Cause a lot of times they're, Want to do that's drugs a, a or party, of, whatever? Like, this one spectrum, it's like way yeah. over. Like, yeah, or, or like, yeah. or like trust fund money that from cocaina. like their parents and shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. We in Miami. You want to buy the cocaine? You want yeah, some cocaine? Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, th like a lot of them, they'll say like, "Oh, I'm an entrepreneur," but they scam or they have trust fund money. Like, they're not real entrepreneurs. Yeah, so like, not. it's on some fucking cap shit. You got, you got Cali, you got uh, Miami, then you have yeah. Texas in the middle. It's like yeah. both of those. I don't. I can't. I just can't be there for long. Yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of, it's a lot of put on a mask. Yeah, it's it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, dude, in, yeah. in these places, yeah. right? So like, if I was if I was to do it again, and I was like an influencer or whatever, I wanted to be focused. Like, this is a good place to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really it's is cheap too. Yeah, <laughs> Texas is one of the best states to be. Joe mm -hmm. Rogan moved here. A bunch of entrepreneurs moved here. Yeah. Elon Musk. All these guys came out here. They're in Austin, but Texas, Texas is bro. still a great place to be. If I wasn't in Florida, I've said it all the time. I would have been here Texas. in Texas. Fuck yeah. Um, never too late. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know he was here. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. uh. Okay. So. So yes, yeah, so you're making like. Damn, man. So, uh, so good. Oh, and then not only that, and then the 3D makes you another M, right? So that, month, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've dude, never thought about the total. I've never calculated the total with the companies. So. Yeah. Well, what do we? I, I don't know. Shit. You probably have better numbers yeah, than I do now. Like, <laughs> it, to me, I'm calculating it now. Like, in my head, it's like probably like three. three don't worry. Three, four, four. He's not the IRS. Nah, <laughs> nah, don't worry. I'm like, <laughs> nah. The I didn't 10, work. The I, 10 mil payment. The IRS agents are the more. worst. Uh, yeah, dude, no, it, that's quite a bit of money. Um, you know what's crazy is like after a certain point, I, 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 after when I hit a, I didn't even know when I hit a million in my account, one of my friends from high school, he, he came to my, the, the gym at the time. He goes, can I ask you something? I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he goes, are you a millionaire? And I go, does that mean like, does it mean like I have a million dollars in my account? Or does that mean like, what does it mean? And he goes, yeah, like, do you have a million dollars in your, in your bank account? So I, I went to Wells Fargo, you logged in my app yeah. and so be it. It was like a million and 17,000. And I was like, I'm a fucking millionaire. Then I bought a Lambo. And I was like, shit. <laughs> but, but, you know, I like really, it, after a certain point, I don't even look, like once we launch, I put all the work on the website, blah, blah, blah. I don't even fucking check it for, for like until Monday. I used to be on it, like refreshing every second, right? Mm -hmm. And like you really kind of just, now the goal is just more efficiency and, and really focusing on the brand identity to build a, a, a tighter, more exclusive, more wanted product mm -hmm. that's right. going to sell out. I want, I want shit to sell. I want it to be hype. I want it to be exciting and just not go. So I don't want to hit a billion dollars with athlete. I wanted to keep it in a range where I have control, where I'm still on it, where I can keep it exclusive. Yeah. And, it, or, and I, I'm, I'll never fucking let it go because I've seen that happen to me. Yeah. Times. 
yeah. too many times, right? And it's like, I'm learning the lessons like from afar. I'm like, okay, not what not to do there, what not to do there. Don't give that away. Don't get the board. Because then shit, it's all politics. So, that's so would bro. you, so you would never sell? Never. Not athlete, no. Nope. What if someone said to you? I got offered 120 million for 20% the other week. I said, nah. 500 million? No. You know, I, I don't want strings. Mm. I don't want anyone to be able to have any strings on me. You're the master puppeteer. No one else can control exactly. you. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And as soon as you give even a, a, a chunk away, you have to, like, you're not playing fully by your rules. Right. So it's like 500. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but not with, with Al Fleet, that one specifically, that one is the one that I want, I need to keep 100%. Um, things like the gym expansion, open to, open to conversations. Things like Odilia. Definitely, we, we got people with the owner of All Saints, actually, ironically, um, JD Sport. There's a lot of like people, big people from Dubai and shit like that as well that are very interested in coming. But it's like, what are you going to, what are you going to bring other than money? I can get money. Yeah. Like, I have money. Like, yeah. but, like what do you, and you got the influence. It's like, like, you don't even understand what the, what this marketing world is. I, yeah. you know, I have to show you everything and how it works. Like, so if, if you can't bring, but with that said, there are people that can bring that. A network. There, and there are people that can bring crazy value. Exactly. Yeah. So in that case, it's like, you know, open to, I'm open to conversation. Okay. I'd rather build some, you know, some fresh shit with, you know, some fresh people. You know what I mean? Yeah, fresh, there fresh you go. Fit. Hey, man, <laughs> partnership's coming very soon. Fresh we already fit, we had a discussion off camera about some stuff. So y'all will probably see some some stuff in the future. Um, So going back to the gym, because I've always thought about like opening a gym and everything. And I've always been like, man, this is like Do interesting. It as a but passion I passion project. But yeah. Cause, and, I, and I saw... Like I've seen you do it, I've seen Bradley Martin do it, whatever, and I'm thinking in my head, like, bro, you could do it. It's gotta 100% be. You could do it. It's gotta be super yeah, expensive to do. do one in fucking Florida. A lot of capital, right? That it's gonna cost. Not that and much. It, you I could mean, do it. how how would you how would you go about it? I mean, you could under. A, you would need at least an M to get it started. I think you could do it for seven hundred, six hundred in Miami. We need an M. Yeah, you do. Need yeah, we would. We need, Miami, you need a, you need to buy the land. Yeah, oh, you know, the building. Yeah. You're an M at least. Yeah, at least. And and it's like, you, not only that. On this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, well, I want to talk about that as well. <laughs> you felt uh, that. Yeah. You felt it. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I know that it would be extremely like taxing. I'd have to be there all the time, market it, whatever. And I want to focus on the pod, right? Because we want to get like well, Joe Rogan upstairs. levels. You know? The pod's upstairs. Boom. Down See? The gym. He's thinking, same thing. Compound. Yeah. It Soundproof could, it. Could, yeah. There you go. Well, <laughs> so we, we would have to soundproof it. Um, be so. Dope. It's so. How would you like? How does someone even go about like I can see it starting a gym and making it too. and everything else like that? Like, how would one even go about it? Fucking go look at some. Like, get on Zello, whatever. <laughs> just, just get, get, get the land. Looking at some spots. Bro. Get the land and fucking yeah, just, just get a warehouse and just make get, it happen. Get a warehouse and make it happen, bro. Like, like I, I would probably not much land in Miami at all, yeah. honestly. So I would say like wherever you guys are, whatever's home for you guys, yeah. build it there. Don't try to go on like a. You don't need a street on fucking whatever the main, you, you, like, yeah, we're, don't we're try to do it in South Beach or some shit. Like, yeah. yeah, we're like, we're by a fucking railroad track and like nothing. Like, make it, it your people, own. And people will come to you if it's, if it, because of what y'all are the building. marketing. Yeah. 100%. And I think that's like a, a big reason that's why smart. you and like Bradley are so successful is because like you guys like go to the gym, you train at the gym, mm -hmm. people know you for that. So it's like people are going to say, I'm going to go to this gym and train. And also both of your guys' gyms are super influencer friendly too. Yeah. And like they're very well equipped. Cut, well equipped. Yeah. It's cutting edge. Y'all are using like equipment that people actually mm -hmm. want, right? Versus like a lot of these gyms, let's be honest. Do they even fucking lift? No. Yeah. yeah. So it, you should definitely fucking do it. I think so. Imagine a whole like media to like a media area, second floor. Fucking y'all do y'all studio on the third floor. Damn. That you rent out the spaces and shit. The second floor. It's a membership bonus, you know? Shit like you know what's funny? So we wear our merch, right? Mm -hmm. Fresh and fit. And people that don't know our content, you know what? You're into fitness. Is this like a gym stuff? Mm -hmm. So automatically speaking, our brand itself is tied to like fitness in the gym. So it is because of his origin, huh? With yeah. The, yep. So that's so I'm that's thinking, sick. bro, that like, dude, like, honestly speaking, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Are you guys not sponsored by supplement brands and stuff? You do uh, no, we've we've been contacted by them, but yeah. like our thing is like we've noticed that like they want us to be like clean or whatever, and it's like nah, man, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna continue they to be like support. super if, raw and if you gotta like tell us how to do our content, then nah, we're like, like, yeah, good. like that's one thing. That's like another tip, yeah, yeah, and like we don't want like we don't want to be slave to like you know mm -hmm. brands and whatever. So we Those just strings, we, bro. Yeah, dude, yeah, like strings. we. We like to say whatever we want to say. If we want to call chicks bitches. We want to be able to do that. We want to call dudes pussies. We want to be able to do that. And it's like, 
that's the thing about sponsors. Like they want you to be super clean and we're like, no, nah, we're not watering down our content 100%. to make some money. Fuck and you got to send it like a week early, two yeah, weeks early. Like, for like, nah, approved. fuck no. that shit, man. If anyone says approve, I need to approve this to me. No, no, no. Yeah. It's it. like lame, dude. Yeah. Especially like with us, like we shoot shit live. So like yeah. crazy stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> bitch has a gun in the studio. Oh, you know what I mean? So it's like crazy. Yeah. Um, so so uh, go ahead. What's next for you on this journey? Is it just more expansion? Is it more, for example, uh, so the maybe another biggest goal is to be present for the next 10 years, right? To, mm. to, to fucking looking at the last 10, I've been on YouTube for a decade now. So for me, for, and that was when I a lot over a decade, years, over a decade. So it's like, and it fucking, I loved every second, but it flew, but I'm 30, bro. Shit. You know, like I feel like I'm 19, right? So wow. it, the, it flies by. I, and so in 10 years, I mean, my mom's going to be 74. Like Damn, my dad wow. will be, yeah. It's like, and thinking just like that, like, fuck, like, that's crazy. You One know? of my favorite videos, you bought your father a car. I thought that mm -hmm. was awesome. That's, that's, I can't watch it, bro. I can't even watch that shit. Very, <laughs> very emotional video. That was, uh, that, like, that was, that, 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 getting my mom the kitchen shit, like, opening the, like, and seeing this in, in works, like, those are the moments we're after. So it's like the next 10 years, I'm after more, you know, a few more of those moments, really, you know? And you made a video on your channel. The day you signed the deal that changed your life, mm -hmm. that was an amazing video. Tell us about that. Thank you. So that was the that was my for the next ten years. So I just finished ten. Now the next ten years, which started February of this year, on my birthday, my thirtieth birthday. So from thir age thirty to age forty, these are the ten things I'm going to do. Right. So it's going to be a thousand YouTube videos. Um, in the first ten, I did like twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be keeping my roots there. Even if YouTube fucking die, I'm still committing to a thousand YouTube videos, not yeah. including shorts. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, that'll be one. Cause I, I'm always my most like me when I'm filming or else I'll just get in the deep end of the business, bro. Yeah. And just like, I'll go in down. Like I'll literally say like, I, I don't give a fuck about my, like, I just need to, I'd need to be there for the team. Mm -hmm. And just like the team ends up finding ways to operate and shit and, 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 and things move on, even if you're there or not at, you know, at certain times, right. To mm -hmm. an extent. Yeah. So it's like number one videos, number two is going to be the fact like launching the fashion brand. It's almost ready for the winter. That's going to be, you know, a big goal is to get a part and get, I want to be fucking like in every, I want to be like all Saint or sorry, like, uh, like Zara. Yep. I want, I want to beat Zara. Yep. Take, take down Zara. Who's going to fucking help me do it. Mm -hmm. That's a huge one. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, there's a bunch of them. It's hit 10 goals. IFBB pro card, um, build my forever home. So I want to design and build. So I'm looking for some acres here to like, Max, the same thing. Max He's going to build thing. a forever yeah. home, too. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> He's just moving right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> right next to it. We'll yeah. get a big acre and split it. Yeah. Motivation. Yeah, man. And uh, just, you know, and, and with the forever home, it's like also, I do want to have a family. I want to have a family. I of want course. kids. I do want, like, I want a baby girl, bro. Like, yeah. I would How many kids do you want? One. Just one? one? Maybe, maybe just two. Just a daughter? Maybe that's two. It? I just no want son? a daughter, bro. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, not going to hold you, bro. If I have kids, only one, bro. I think one, yeah, because yeah. I have like Nala. But I hate comparing. <laughs> I want like eight of them. Do you want eight? I mean, I need at least two, man. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, two. I end up retarded like him. <laughs> what are you trying to All say, right, bro? <laughs> I got big family, eight brothers, three sisters. What you mean? Yeah, but you like live by yourself pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's why you end up fucked up. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Um, expanding the gyms. That's a, that's the last one I'll say. But, uh, I want to do five around the world. Dude. Not not Alpha Lands, Alpha Gyms or Alpha Athletic Clubs. Dude, I can't wait to see, you, man. You've done so much, brother. I ain't yeah. gonna do Florida. Y'all got that one. Hey, man. Let's yeah. Hey, we, we might have to do it, man. Let's now, do, let's do it, bro. This is a lot of inspiration seeing this compound that he got here, the Gaines compound. But we need you in, in Miami, though. So yeah. 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 We done. We'll do it there. Definitely. Yep. Tampa's whack anyway, bro. Miami's way better. <laughs> there ain't nothing in Tampa <laughs> but old people, saying, man. If y'all could come to the Summer Shredding Show on Saturday. Okay. Wait, it's uh, in Tampa. In Tampa? It's in Tampa. Or, or Sunday, there's an event. C Bum's coming. We're all going. Wait, like, next Saturday? Next, next Sunday's the event. Next Saturday's the show. Yeah, yeah, in Tampa. If y'all are free, we'd love y'all to come check it out. Maybe we're, we can. That's we a bodybuilding organization. We might have to make the trip. Yeah, we can talk about that. That's a big yeah. one, too. But yeah. the, that's like HBO, Netflix, they're all wanting that. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all a right. big one. Yeah, Tampa's not that far. It's like one hour flight. Yeah. It'd be Sunday, it'd be good networking there. Might be a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that might be the move, man. Let's go. Um, what else here? Man, I had so many questions. I just want to make sure I check them out. Fresh, go ahead. No, that's it for me. That was it for you? Mm hmm. Ghost supplements. Ghost, love them. You've been working with them forever. Mm -hmm, What's mm -hmm. that like nowadays? So uh, still working with Dan Ryan, the two owners. I signed with, like, Dan used to work with the Cellicor brand, which is like who I was with way back when, my first sponsor ever. Um, and he, it was funny because I, I, I was the number one selling guy, but I didn't even know. He called me, he goes, hey, has anyone ever called you like to like <laughs> ask if you need anything? I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> he goes, 
okay, I'm gonna come down to Houston. So he flies down to Houston, like started building a relationship with me. And then a few years later ends up saying, you know, I'm working on this thing, just like heads up. Like, you know, he was my, he was my guy. I was like, yeah, fuck, I fucking got you, bro. Mm-hmm. So I ended up signing with Ghost before they even launched uh, and kind of really tried to help build the team. Back in 2015, they launched in 2016. And I would, I mean, I would kill it with fucking commission, bro. I'd kill it. Like I did like $2 million in sales for him. That's wow. No, sorry, $2 million commission wow. in a year. <laughs> Fucking nuts, man. Um, but like nowadays, it's obviously toned down, but the team's grown so much. And now they're like all like that's a lot of times things will start with somebody or with, with like, you know, you can kind of take take some credit or whatever. But now they are fucking on another level, bro. Yeah. And I ain't doing I'm not a part of like maybe from the beginning, but like that's all of them. Right. It's mm-hmm. like right. they've taken it and they're like high, high numbers now, which is crazy. And like that's. I'm still a part though, of course, but like, yeah. And, uh, I will be till the day. I'll never work with another supplement brand unless it's my own. Bam. Man. And I want to say this because you're wildly successful between a successful YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. Uh, it plummets a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah you got, you got, million, we saw yeah. your black upstairs. You got it. <laughs> well, so after this, you know, yeah, definitely going to go up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, YouTube over a million successful athleisure brand, hundred million in a year, successful gym, right? Making million a month, 3d energy, you're about to launch a, you know, a clothing line for more fa- that's, mm-hmm. you know, more like, you know, streetwear uh, or or Dilla mm-hmm. or is Ordilia. It, or Ordilia. Ordilia. Yeah, mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. The span the double L's. I keep forgetting <laughs> the Spanish. Um, what would you say to someone that as an aspiring entrepreneur since you've dominated so many different realms of entrepreneurship? Don't ever feel like if if you think you're dominating and you get too comfortable there, you're going to someone's going to pass your ass. Damn. All right. So that's number 1. Number 2 is going to be the su- the longer you wait to get started, you're just putting yourself at a, at a further like the guy who did start that day. He kind of thought about it, just like in, started googling, started looking for the manufacturer, started reach actually sending the message to the uh-huh. manuf- like that guy's gonna be fucking ahead of you no matter what. Mm. Bam. So it's like that's two. Um, number three, don't think you need a, a a lot of money to do something. You can literally start with a pen and paper. Any business, you start with a fucking pen and paper. Start writing it out, start drawing it out, right, um, and start small. Number four, be careful with who you bring on into, into your thing. If this is your, like you can, you can surprise yourself with how much you can handle. That's a fucking big one. Cause if you don't know how to do a chunk of it, just try to fucking learn it for a day, for a night, for a week. Right. And just get the, under, like, no one should ever come into the business and, and, and know how to hold, you know, do something that you don't know about. You right. should just educate yourself. It's your field. Mark Cuban always says like, if you don't know everything about your, like your field, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. It's true. Right. So it's like, that's a huge one. Uh, number five, Mar- like be able to connect and like, bro, I'm, I'm really close with the gym shark. I'm close with the fucking young LA guys. I'm close with, because like at the end of the day, like I said, even though they're competitors, you're still cool with them. Bro. Yeah. It's, it's like at the end of the day, there's enough space for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And it's like, the, like I said, Lulu's own $4 billion in one fabric. So let's like take them down. Let's become the new fitness scene. Mm-hmm. Fuck under armor. Fuck all that. Like yeah. let's do commercial. Let's be the new, you know? So I think that's a big one. Um, and just, don't get, I have a good, man, this was like 10 roll. Fuck, I've never, Keep I've going, never gone. man. It's fine. Yeah. That's why I asked the question. Uh, don't hold grudges, man. Cause a lot of people are going to, I've had many, bro, everyone tries to want something. They'll steal, they'll take, they'll this. And it's like, you don't have enough time if you're really trying to push forward to micromanage and into like, really, if you end up giving too many fucks and you're, you get so pissed for like, so, and it really bothers you and it affects what you're doing moving forward. Mm. You're wasting your time. It's like you have to be able to brush off the little shit. Fucking 20K, oh, that sucks. Yeah, I ain't talking that. Done. Cut. But keep going. Like, don't hang up on it, right? So that's another one. Um, and good. If you if you treat people well, genuinely, like, if you engage and, like, care about the – like, everything, no matter what's happening, if I'm talking to someone, it's like that's all that matters right there. You don't rush them. You look them in the eye, learn their name, and you, like, you, you enjoy that moment because, like, that's – that interaction is why you are successful mm. if you're in this space. Right. Yeah. So I think that's huge, which I love that you guys fucking, like, I could see that shit right away. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's huge. I think a lot of people aren't like that. Uh, people get Hollywood, bro. That's Hollywood, just annoying. Bro. Like for <laughs> yeah. me, I'm going to stop and take a picture with you no bro, matter what. It doesn't what. matter. I'll be, yeah. I'll be until my feet fall down yeah. or they break or whatever. Like, yeah. I'll just do it, man. Yeah. And uh, be grateful for it, you know? And then, yeah, that, that's, that's it. Yeah. Bam. That's fire, man. Where can the people find you, man? YouTube.com slash Christian Guzman. Guys, so I'm going to put channel, all those links man. below. 
Let's go support him. Yeah, I'm going to put all the links, guys. Clothing, energy drinks, gyms, everything. This guy is a serial entrepreneur, man. Thank you so much for coming on the pod, man. We Thank appreciate you. it Thank greatly, you, my friend. I appreciate oh, you, bro. There you go. Handshake. Guys, links are below. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. Peace.